dear beloved, welcome back. Today I want to talk about a topic that I don't hear talked about a lot, um, which is why I want to talk about it, um, and that is the topic of honoring work and honoring rest. I hear about these things um, separately. Well, not really. I hear about rest separately and I hear about work, but not really in these terms either way. Um, but in terms of honoring work and honoring rest, why, right? Why are we even doing these things to begin with? Um, so that's what I want to lean into so that we can grow in our, in our understanding on these topics. So why do I say, why are these topics important in the first place? Why do we want to talk about work and why do we want to talk about rest? Well, I think it's important to think back to why do we work and why do we rest in the very first place? And the answer always goes back to Genesis and the creation of man. Now, when man created Adam, he created, uh, he, he gave Adam dominion over the earth and essentially f to till and to work the ground. And so he found uh, dignity in work and he found a purpose in working with his hands and tilling the ground and working in that way. And so that's why we work. Anything that we consider work these days <laughs> looks a little different than maybe what uh, was imagined at creation. <laughs> um, the fact that I am talking into a microphone and you are hearing it, you know, down the line somewhere um, and that's considered work is crazy, um, but really beautiful. And that's why, that's why we work, right? Because we were created to work. If Adam just sat on his bottom and <laughs> did no work whatsoever, I think he would feel a little bit lost. And it says a lot that he didn't do that. It says a lot that he went out and he named the animals and he saw them all and he um, was there with them. And then he was tilling the ground and he was active. As humans, we are called to be active, <laughs> whether that's being active with our minds, with our physical bodies, with um, both in tandem, whatever it may be, we're called to be active. We're not called to be passive or we're not called to just be doormats, right? We're called to be active in, in the way that we generate new life and in the way that we um, nurture life and in the way that we grow ourselves and in the way that we can do work to help our fellow man as well as ourselves um, in this life and help them to the next. I mean, that's simple if, if you follow that train of thought, right? So when we talk about work, I hear a lot in the modern um, and in our culture that work has become a little bit, a little bit too sensationalized, if you can say it that way. Um, it's become something that uh, is the only um, thing that matters, right? If if you are working hard or if you are um, have a really high pri profile job, then you're worth more, right? Or that um, maybe it's not even working hard anymore. It's more so how can I do the least amount of work and be the most successful, right? We've seen a lot in the last few generations about work um, and, and the narrative that the culture is talking about work. And frankly, none of it is really positive. None of it is really um, honoring the dignity of the person as well as the dignity of work. And so I wanted to reframe this conversation in, in terms of honor in honoring work because it's something that we are designed to do. Um, and I think in our culture, at least in my generation, I feel this polarization of either we're 
we're going 100% or we're throwing it all out the window, right? I don't know if anyone else feels this, but I feel this, that either it's hustle culture or we are making money while we sleep and we don't, we don't really have a job, (laughs) right? It's one or the other. And in a lot of things, it's, it's one or the other, right? It's either good or it's terrible and, and we're throwing it out, out the window, right? So, in all things, God always says that the middle is where we want to be. Virtue is the golden mean, the mean between two extremes. And if you remember back from like fourth grade math, the mean means <laughs> the middle, right? You take any numbers and the mean is like the middle no- number in there, right? So we take the extreme of hustle culture in the extreme of only making money while you sleep passively and not really working at all. And we want to look at the middle and we want to look at honoring work because there is dignity in work and there is dignity in the person that works and in, um, work doesn't have dignity just for the sake of work, but it has dignity in the fact that the human does the work. And so that is, um, that is kind of the the deal here. Now, turning our conversation to rest, um, there's plenty of things that are for our entertainment these days. There's plenty of things that will numb our mind. There are plenty of things that um, are exist to kind of give us that break from kind of if we're hustling, 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 um, and we're not made for that 24 seven, which we're not, it's going to be a little bit, um, hard to keep going at, at that pace. And so we're going to need things to give us a break. And so there are plenty of things that kind of distract us, but not a whole lot that gives us generative rest, meaning that you rest and that gives you life. So uh, there, are, there are some things out there. I would say more than a more than a balanced work because recently there's been this push in in the wellness world towards towards real rest and doing things that regenerate us and things like that. And so that is uh, a good thing in my opinion. But again, all things in moderation. We don't want to go to the extreme where we're moving to Bali and we are um, living in a yoga retreat for our entire lives and we don't want to not rest at all because we don't know how to do it, right? (laughs) We want to find the mean. We want to find where rest will give us life and that we know how to rest and how to rest well. There's plenty of ways that we can rest not well right? We may know those. Um, I don't know if you've ever spent an entire, your entire day off, um, watching Netflix. Okay. Guilty. I've been there too, but do you feel rested at the end of that? Maybe your body feels a little bit more rested, but when you go to sleep that night, is your mind racing? Yeah, I thought so too. Mine does too. And so there are things that we can do that, distract us, right? And sometimes distraction is good. Sometimes our brain needs that break. But if that's the only type of rest that we do, I think that we are not really looking and honoring our our design from our creator. Now, going back to, to Genesis to creation, like we did with work, we can also find that rest comes from there, Rest comes from the Sabbath rest that God rested on the seventh day. He created the earth and the sky and all the animals in the sea and in on land and man and woman. And then on the seventh day, he rested. He took a whole day, right? If we look at all of creation in six days and then on seventh day, he rested a whole day for rest. Our week, our seven day week is based off of this and Sundays as the day of rest and celebration for us Catholics and Christians is the day that we are called to rest. And so we can join our Lord in his Sabbath rest on Sundays. And he asks us to do that. And in this joining him, he's, he's inviting us 
into his own Sabbath rest. And his invitation is also an invitation to trust. Because if you think about it, if you work for six days out of the week and completely abandon yourself to rest and trust in the Lord that he will provide on that seventh day, that that's what he's he's wanting, right? Of course, we can get in our minds and we can be like, oh, no, 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 no. We have to, you know, take these things upon ourselves and we have to um, make these things work for ourselves because oftentimes that's what we're taught and that's what we're, we learn and that's what we hear in the culture. If you don't do it, then it's never going to happen, right? And I agree. There's plenty of things to be said about that. However, that does not play a role in rest. And that's why I say it's something that has to do with trust because we trust in the Lord and we give back an entire day one of seven back to him completely and he will reward us but that's not even why we do it we do it because we trust him right we trust him and we trust that he will take care of us and we trust that our work the other six days out of the week is is enough right all of that and again, like I want to say, all things in moderation, we want to practice in both of these things, in honoring work and in honoring rest, we want to practice the virtue of temperance, right? That's not doing something too much or too little. It's kind of finding that balance of this is good, but I'm not going to spend my entire life doing this, right? So that's 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 kind of the the conversation I want to start here is in honoring work and in honoring rest. Now I want to give a couple of tips for how I see it in my, you know, I'm just one person. I try to learn as much as I can. Um, so I know I know don't know any, everything, but I want to share a few tips for working well and a few tips for resting well. So number one tip for working well is to start your work time with intentionality. Kind of just overview uh, what what you want to get done during this work time or whatever it may be. Just just start it with a little bit of intentionality. That will help so much in uh, clarifying what is actually necessary and keeping you focused. Number two is to be focused and give 100%. So when you are working, give it that 100%. Don't feel like you're in a rush, but be focused, be all there and give it your all. And that will help with, with being intentional at the beginning. It will help clear out any distractions that you have in your mind. And then you can be focused 100% of the time. And number three, my third tip for working well is to practice gratitude. Practice gratitude for how far you've come, for the experiences that you've been able to have with this work, um, with um, ways that your family has been blessed by it, um, a great number of things, right? Practice gratitude in your work. I think that's super important. Now for resting well, my top tips for that is to seek true leisure. Now, true leisure, if you don't know, is really contemplation and contemplation that leads back to the creator. Um, there's so much that you can learn about leisure. I'm still learning about it myself, but it's one of my favorite topics because I think it's very underrated. Um, so I would seek out true leisure. That's definitely part of it. I talk about leisure. I took an entire week out of my program, Made Beloved, uh, to talk about leisure because it's that important. It's really, it really is that important. Um, Joseph Pieper has a great book on leisure. It's called Leisure as the Basis of Culture. Um, it is philosophy, so it's a little bit hard to understand if you're not reading philosophy all the time, but I would definitely recommend that if you want to learn more about leisure. Um, number two is to be present, right? Be present to those around you and let yourself rest. If we're present in the in where we need to be in order to rest, we're we're cutting out the distractions. We're cutting out the um, thoughts about work. We're cutting out about the the worries in our mind, and we're able to just rest. That will give us the most rest, um, the most um, 
you could say, like, that will give you the most benefit of your rest for sure. Um, and then practice gratitude. Again, like in work, we want to practice gratitude in our rest. Gratitude in this way can often turn into a prayer, which I think is beautiful. Um, at least that's kind of what it does for me. Um, but practice gratitude, practice gratitude in terms of, um, being grateful and telling the Lord what you're grateful for, but also practice gratitude in telling a person (laughs) that you are grateful for them or for whatever you did, write thank you notes or call up a friend and just say thank you or whatever it may be. Practice gratitude in, in that time of rest as well. And that you will reap the benefits of that for sure. There are lots of studies on gratitude and (laughs) how incredible it is for, uh, not only the the receiver of the gratitude, but also for the giver. Um, so that's definitely worth doing. So one more time to kind of go over those quickly. Top tips for working well. Start work time with intentionality. Be focused and give 100% and practice gratitude. And tips for resting well is number one, seek true leisure. Be present and let yourself rest and practice gratitude. I hope that helps you and I hope that helps start the conversation surrounding honoring work and honoring rest. Until next time.